Hi friends, it's Vanessa back for another tutorial. So for this one, I'm going to be using some Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press, and that is 100% cotton watercolor paper. I'm going to be using the colors Payne's Gray, Lamp Black, Quinacridone Pink, and Permanent Red. Actually, those two were backwards. It was permanent red, then quinacridone pink. <laughs> I'm also going to be using two brushes, and they are both the pigeon letter brushes. The first one is a size 8 round, and the next one is a size 16 round. You also need a circular object to make the round moon, a pencil, always important, and some white. I use Copic Opaque White. You can use white watercolor, white gouache, white acrylic, any white medium that you have. Before we begin, I want you to excuse me for my nasally voice. I am just getting over a cold brought to you by Little Sprout, who is in summer camp and brought home some Camp Kid germs. So we are going to draw a circle directly in the middle of your paper. You can use any object that you have. It doesn't have to be a helix maker. And on the outside of this circle, I am going to paint the sky. So we're going to leave the inside nice and bright white. So all I'm doing is adding some uh, Payne's Gray to whatever blue I have on my palette. I always have blue on that palette. So you don't have to. This Payne's Gray is by M. Graham, and it is like a blue-toned Payne's Gray. Um, so you don't have to add any, but if you want to make your grayish, a little bit more bluish then add some blue to it um, okay and now we are just going to paint around the entire outer portion of the circle um, and that's what we're doing here so relax I'll give you a couple of tips as we go and just take your time painting this circle or the outside of the circle okay first tip when you are painting a large space and you don't want one side of it to dry while you work on the other side one thing that you can do is put a little puddle of paint just as you saw me do there on the side that you're not working on that's going to see keep that side nice and wet and it allow you to work on one side and get back to it a little bit later so you don't have to worry about that drying and then have these overlapping sections with like dry and wet paint and it just looks a little bit messy so if you want a nice smooth background keep that uh, little area on the other side that you're not working with keep that area wet so put a nice big old puddle on it I promise you it's not going to do anything crazy to your paper and that way you can switch back and forth between sides. So when you feel like, oh, that puddle looks like it needs a little bit more, you go back over there. If it's drying, you go back over there, add a little bit more paint, add a little bit more of that puddle. Or you can stop the side you're working on, add a puddle to that side, and then switch to the other side. So you can do this back and forth, back and forth until both ends reach the middle. Uh, until they they join and you'll have a nice even background you won't have to worry about those hard water lines you won't have to worry about your paint blooming you won't have to worry about any of that it'll be a nice soft even background all right have at it i'll see you back here in a few seconds
So for this piece, we are going to let this completely dry before we move on to the next step. We're only gonna put one layer. For those of you who have followed my tutorials in the past, you know I work in many layers, but for this one, we're just gonna leave it for one and come back to it. So let it fully dry before moving on to this step. Next step is to paint the moon. So I'm gonna be taking a little bit of that quinacridone pink and I am adding in some, quina uh, sorry, some permanent red. And this permanent red is by Magello Mission Gold and it leans more orange than red. Weird, I know, but it works for this moon. So I'm adding in the um, pink to kind of brighten it up. And the first thing we're going to do is wet the moon. Now don't do what I did and wet the moon with dirty water. It, uh, it looks really bad. <laughs> but of course, I continue to paint this moon with dirty water, to paint the background with dirty water, because I just don't learn my lesson. So don't do what I did. If your water is dirty from the background, clean it or just get like have two jars of water with you. I'm going to continue. I'm going to cover it up. So, you know, don't worry about it. Just don't do what I did. Um, and don't mind how crazy it looks right now. It'll get better. So completely wet the inside of the moon with clean water and we are going to be working wet on wet in this piece. And I'm still using the, um, the same size eight round brush. You can move on to a bigger brush if you wish. Right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue uh, with this brush, but use whatever brush that you feel most comfortable with. If you uh, like to have bigger brushes to cover bigger areas, then go ahead and, and go for a bigger brush. Now I'm going to take a little bit of that mixture and I am going to start adding it to the moon. So one of the things you're gonna notice very early on is that the left side of the moon is going to be a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, sorry. It's going to be a little bit lighter than the right side of the moon. And we're doing that on purpose where we're gonna have a nice light area and then it's gonna contrast with a really dark area on the right side. So we're going to take that mixture in and we are just going to, you know, plop it onto that moon. You don't have to follow me uh, step by step for this. Um, go with what you feel. If you want to uh, bring up a picture of a blood moon and kind of get a little bit of inspiration from that, feel free to do that. Like I said, you don't have to follow me step by step. The beauty about painting these celestial or galatial, galaxial, galatial, what is that? <laughs> galaxial pieces is that no two are ever the same. And it really does depend on how the water is flowing for you that day on the paper, or how the paint is moving, how loose your hands on it. It, it. it depends on a number of factors. So go with that, lean into that. Um, and and just let it come out of you and let it do, you know, how, whatever it wants to do on the paper. Go with it. Lean into that. So as you see here, I am adding a lot of paint, a lot of this mixture to the right side of the moon. Um, and I'm turning my paper around to make it a lot more comfortable for me as I'm, I'm heading towards that left side of the moon. I am not adding as much paint but I am dragging the paint that's already on the paper. I'm dragging that into that area. So it's not going to be stark white, but we're going to introduce a little bit of white later on to make it a little bit more starker. So continue doing this, continue this process, adding color as you see fit. Just make sure you add a lot more color to the right hand side than you would to the left. Okay, now that I have some color on the moon, and you'll see, um, well, as you can see, it's not like fully red. There's splotches of white in between. I, I dropped in some pigment, I tapped it in. Um, now we're gonna make the really dark area of that moon. So I'm going back to the Payne's Gray, and I'm going to fully saturate the tip of my brush with that Payne's Gray. And I am going to add it to the lower right hand side of the moon, because we're gonna have like a, like a nice dark spot coming out of that moon. And your paper should hopefully still be wet. If it's not wet, 
you might want to um, add a little bit of water to keep the paper wet. And that Payne's gray is just going to flow into the, um, the red orange color that you already have down. And now we're going to clean your brush off, go back into your mixture, and to the ends of that paint gray, we're going to add some of that reddish orange to mix it in. Actually, let's add it to the whole thing. We're gonna add it to all of the, of the uh, paints gray that you added in there. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to add the, um, the red orange color just to mix it all in together, make it a nice dark, dark, dark brown. Now remember, this does not have to be perfect. This is only our first layer. We are also going to let this layer dry and then come back in and work on it again. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Right now, we're just laying the color down. Okay, next step. We're gonna take whatever white medium you have. I'm using Copic Opaque White, but if you have white gouache, white watercolor, white acrylic, white ink, any white medium you have, and we're going to add that to the very edges of the left side of the moon. So where you left that really light area, we're gonna add that in. And add it in as, as bright white as you can make it. And then we're going to blend that in to the red orange of the moon. Okay, so just clean your brush off, add a little tiny bit of water, and blend it in to the rest of the moon. Okay, and keep wetting your moon as you go along if your paper is starting to dry. If you're working on 100% cotton watercolor paper, uh, you may not have to do that, but uh, it tends to retain and hold on to that water a lot longer. But if you're using non-cotton watercolor paper, you may have to keep re-wetting your paper. So we're gonna keep adding in that white to the very edge and we're going to blend it. You don't want your, your brush to be too wet when you're blending, so after you clean it off in the water, just brush it on, on a paper towel and, uh, and continue blending that out. So once you're done with that, we're gonna start introducing a little bit more color. And I picked the wrong color here, <laughs> making mistakes, but again, we're leaning into it, so I'm going right back over that with my permanent red. Um, and we're just going to add a bit more color. And you'll see here that I'm adding the pure versions of the quinacridone pink and the permanent red. I'm not mixing it and I'm going straight from the pan right to the paper. So we're gonna have really deep, dark splotches of color. And uh, this is going to give your moon a little bit more texture. Um, uh, it's gonna come to life a little bit more. But again, this is only our first layer. We're going to deepen it even further in our second layer. I am going to add a little bit more of that Payne's Gray since so much of it washed out as I was adding in the red. So I'm going to add some more of that right back in, blend it out, and add some more of that permanent red on top of it.
Now, once you're done fussing with your moon, as I have been doing, um, I tend to take it a little bit overboard. I fuss a lot with my with my work. <laughs> Just once you're done, you're going to let it completely dry again before we move on to the next part. We're going to deepen the background in the next part, and we don't want that background seeping into our moon. So make sure that the piece, the moon itself, is completely dry before moving on. All right, moon is dry through the magic of editing, and now I'm going to go into my lamp black, and I'm going to add it to the mixture that's already on my palette. So the mixture is blue and Payne's gray, and on top of that, I'm adding in lamp black. So it's gonna be a mixture of all of those colors. Um, and we are going to start painting the background, and we're going to do the exact same thing that we did when we first painted the background. Remember to try to keep your edges wet when working on the opposite side and completely fill in the entire part. Uh, be a little bit careful so that you don't paint into the moon. Uh, if you do have a shaky hand, such as I do, and I usually paint either in or out of areas that I'm not supposed to be painting in or out of, uh, I try to fix it afterwards. Um, and I'll give you a couple of tips of how to do that after as well. So paint the entire background and we'll meet back here when you're done. Okay, now that your background is completely done, let it dry again before moving on to the next piece because you don't want the second layer of your moon to bleed into the background. Now, if you're happy with the way that your moon looks right now, you don't have to add a second layer. You can leave it just as is. But I looked at my moon and it looks like it has a big old face on it. It looks like it has, has two eyes, a nose, and a mouth, and I was not happy with it. So I'm going to go in with a second layer. Then for this second layer, I'm trying not to fuss with it too much. So I grabbed a bigger brush so that I can work on bigger areas without messing with the underpainting too much. So I'm going to start with the white because that's the one thing that I don't want any color blending into. So I'm gonna start with the white on the dry paper and I'm going to add a nice amount of it to the edges. I'm going to clean off my brush, tap it just a little, and then start spreading that white into the moon. Once I am done with the white, I am going to wet my entire moon. Again, if you are happy with the way your moon looks, you don't need to do a second layer. But if you want it to have a little bit more vibrancy, a little bit more color, a little bit more contrast, then go ahead and add the second layer. Um, be very gentle when you are adding water to the second layer. So use a very light hand so that you don't pick up too much of that color underneath. When you get into the dark areas of the moon, um, I suggest that after you make a pass over that area, you clean your brush off because what you will be doing otherwise, you'll see here, is dragging that dark gray color into the light areas of the moon. Um, so you just wanna make sure that you clean your brush off right after you uh, pass over that dark area with a wet brush. Okay, now that your moon is wet, it's nice and wet all over, now we're going to begin 
to start building up those colors again. So you'll see I'm using the same exact colors and I'm going specifically over those areas to me that looked like two huge eyes. They look like two eye sockets. So I'm gonna go over those areas um, and I'm going to deepen some of that color. So I'm, I'm adding a bit more red. I am adding a bit more of the quinacridone pink. Um, I am making sure to spread it so that there is no like uh, drying area. There's no area that is drying on my paper. And um, yeah, so I'm just adding in a little bit more color. You'll also see here that instead of mixing some of the uh, reddish orange directly on the paper with the Payne's Gray, I actually added it into my little puddle of paint that I had. So I added a little bit of Payne's Gray to that and then I added that mixture uh, to the moon in other areas just to give it uh, a little bit of a more moody feel. Okay, back to the full Payne's Gray. I'm adding it to the bottom of the moon, so where it was before, and I'm doing the same exact thing that I did before. I'm adding in the Payne's Gray. I am blending it out. I am adding in a bit of the um, permanent red and a bit of the quinacridone pink um, to just give a little bit more depth and dimension to that moon. Okay, and once you are satisfied with it, if you wanted to add a little bit more of that gray color to the red and, you know, push it further into the moon, add little pockets of darkness, you can absolutely do that. But I think that I'm going to stop here because I am very satisfied with the way it looks. And one of the hardest things you can do is stop. Um, and here you go. I hope that you had a wonderful time uh, painting this moon along with me. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.